Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about how to speed up your renders in After Effects. The process you will learn today will yield dramatically faster renders by utilizing your computer's full power. It works both on Mac and PC and best of all you can continue to work inside After Effects while rendering. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay so today we're talking about how to speed up our renders with inside After Effects. Um, so this is something that I've been doing for uh, ever since I can remember in my career um, and uh, it's mostly come down to necessity because um, a lot of times you just got to get shit done and I want my computer to work at its maximum capacity um, as much as possible and I found that actually um, a lot of people don't actually utilize um, the full uh, power of their computer whether it's a PC or a Mac or whatever um, and for a lot of different reasons um, and I'm here to hopefully improve on that and help you guys uh, understand that you do have a lot more processing power that you might think and you can actually go sometimes up to eight nine times faster than what you normally would so it's huge uh, it's very important and there's just a couple things to really know um, and just make sure that you do right and as long as you do that right um, you're going to be able to uh, get out of work earlier and enjoy your life um, so if you just want the quick answer, here's a quick answer. Um, whether you're on a Windows or a Mac, um, you want to either open up a command prompt window or uh, a terminal window. And basically you want to put in um, this code right here. And then you want to put dash project and then your project file name. Um, and then it's very important on a Windows that you actually have uh, this quotation mark here. And then on a Mac, you're going to put this code in. And then same thing, you're going to have your project file location at the bottom. Now, don't be scared. I'm going to go through and I'm going to actually show you guys how to actually do this. But if you just want the quick answer, do this, set it to skip frames. Um, and go to town. Um, you're not going to see a good return on result if you're doing quick times on this, but um, as long as you are frame rendering and you put this in, you are happy. So how do we actually do this? So for the more in-depth, all right, so what we want to do is um, usually when you render, um, you, well, not usually, but most people, if, if you're rendering out of After Effects, um, you're going to come up here and you're going to set it to either a quick time or uh, a sequence, right? Um, so first thing to note, very importantly, is that this does not work with QuickTimes. QuickTimes cannot do multi-processing uh, uh, rendering, all right? This only works with frame sequences, okay? So um, don't be turned off by that, though, because a lot of times you can render a frame sequence and then uh, bring that frame sequence in and then render the QuickTime, and you'll still save yourself potentially hours. Um, so here we go. So what I'd like to do for you guys is I'd like to actually show you um, uh, some comparisons of, of how this actually, how much faster this actually is. So what I have here and what I want to do is I have, um, I've set up a PNG sequence and it's just a project I worked on a little while ago and it has like kind of usual suspects. It has like um, lots of effects in there and it has uh, CG renders and stuff like that. It's got enough to keep the computer busy for a while to render a few hundred frames. So what I want to do is I've already set this up to render and I'm going to let this render um, and we're going to see how long it takes just on my machine just alone. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit render and yep, looks like I've already rendered this one time. Um, so let's go ahead and hit render and then what I want to do is I want us to look at actually what our computer is doing, right? Like what is the CPU is actually doing? How, how are we what's going on here underneath the hood. All right, so if I come to my computer and I click on my CPUs, I can see that I have 15 CPUs. So I, I got a pretty nice setup here. Um, and, but I'm only using, pff, on average, about half of that, right? I'm only using, it peaks every now and again, but I'm not really using its full capacity of what I could be. Um, so what I'm going to do is, you know, we can see this and I'm going to, I'm going to let it go. Um, and then I'm going to pause it and we're going to come back and we're going to see how long it takes. Okay. So we're back. It is finished and it has come in at just about 17 minutes. So 17 minutes to render, uh, I'm not even sure how many frames this is. It's a few hundred. Um, all right. So 17 minutes, that's not the best I will say. Um, so let's go ahead and let's try it with the fast way. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, Control M, Command M on the Mac, um, and let's go ahead and set our settings. Now this is very important uh, to do. Um, again, it only works with image sequences, and I'll show you why. 
All right, so um, let's go ahead and let's set it to uh, a PNG. Um, there we go, PNG. Um, use comp frame number is fine. And then let's go to our uh, render settings here. And then there are render, render settings. Um, we're gonna want to very importantly click skip existing. And what this means is that basically you'll see it says allows multi-machine rendering. So what this means is if you're on a server or farm, um, what's gonna happen is if, if After Effects is rendering and it sees that there's already a frame there, it's gonna skip it. It's gonna say, all right, someone else is already doing that, I'm skipping it. Um, so I'm gonna click this and we're gonna go okay. Now this only works with sequences again because um, with a QuickTime, QuickTime is just one file. So you gotta think if you're a computer and it says skip existing frames, you're gonna be like, well shit, there's already a file there and it's that QuickTime. Um, so it doesn't work. That's why you have to do the image sequences because it looks at uh, it tries to skip the frames, right? So it's like, okay, frame one's already there. I'm going to frame two. Frame five's already there. I'm going to frame six. Okay, so that's set up. I'm just going to quickly put this into um, a new place here. We're going to label this CMD. Um, and then let's go ahead and hit save. All right, so we're ready. Um, I'm going to save the project. So now here's where the trick comes in. Um, so what you want to do is you want to open up uh, a command line renderer or command prompt, excuse me, <laughs> uh, command prompt. And again, if you're on a Mac, it's going to be the terminal window, right? Same thing essentially. All right. And we're going to want to go to your either your finder or your Windows Explorer. And you want to navigate, I've just bookmarked this here, but you want to navigate to program files, Adobe, whatever version you're on, and go to your support files. You can also just search for this too. Um, so then you want to find something called AE Render. Okay, so what AE Render is, it's an execu ex executable file um, that allows you to um, have multiple instances of After Effects cooking. So let's go ahead and take this and let's drag this in to our command prompt. You'll see what it does. It just puts it just puts where it is. No big deal. I'm just saying, okay, that's what you want to open. So we're going to hit space. And it's very important, once again, that we get this right. Space dash project. Okay, this is telling um, the command line renderer that uh, we want a project to be in there. And then let's navigate to our project. So my project just so happens to be right here. This is the project that we're in right now. Let's take this. And remember, we've saved our project and we've also set it up to be multi-sequence. All right. Now, this is the this is where the difference comes in between a Mac and a PC. So on a Mac, you're done. Just hit enter. Um, on a PC, you want to hit um, quotation mark and then hit enter. And then what I like to do is I like to just take this and copy it. Um, I hit I hit it twice. That's my bad. Um, I like to take it and copy it, and then, then I can just paste it, and I'm gonna hit enter. Normally you wouldn't have to do that, I just accidentally hit the wrong button twice, so it like reset it. So let's go ahead and let's see what it does. So it's gonna um, start up everything, it's gonna say if there's errors, if there's not errors, um, it doesn't it's like something with my GPU 2 or something, it doesn't really matter, like that stuff doesn't really matter. So it's gonna basically open up After Effects is essentially what it's doing. Um, while it's doing that, I'm going to open up a new command window because the idea is you have to think of this as like these are all separate After Effects that you're opening and they're all going to work together um, to render faster. All right, so that's going. So now I've got a new command prompt window open here. And it's acting strange. Hold on, let me open up a new one. There we go. That looks better. All right, sometimes it happens. All right, so let's go ahead and, oh, it's not letting me paste, oh, strange. All right, so no big deal. Let's just, uh, let's go over here, copy this, and then let's paste it here. I must have lost my copy and paste. And then while again, while that's opening, let's open up another command prompt window. And what this is doing, you're gonna see, I'll show you in just a minute. You're open, you're utilizing all your cores. And again, cores, what cores do, cores are basically like mini CPUs on your computer. So cores enable you to do multiple tasks at once. So you're saying basically, all right, I want one one core of After Effects to be running on this, I want another core to be running on this, and I want another one to be running on this, and so on. Um, 
All right, so let's go ahead and paste again. Go, so we're gonna get another one going. And what we're gonna see if we come over here and we start looking at our CPUs, wow, all of a sudden we're up to 89, 75%, 86, 67, but we're still not as high as we could be. So this is where it gets a little bit uh, conflicting with some people's opinions, but my opinion is basically you do half. So if you have, you know, right now I have 16, I have 16 CPUs here. So I have 16 CPUs. So I can, in theory, I can do half of that, right? Um, I can do half of those and my computer will still pretty much be happy as long as I'm not like doing a bunch of other crazy tasks. Now, if you want to be real safe, cut that in half again and do four. Um, I think because I'm recording right now, I'm going to actually just do uh, six. So you'll see I'm just copy pasting and going. Um, and then I'm gonna get one more going. And then maybe when I stop recording, I'll get two more going and then we'll come back and we'll see actually how long it took. But what, what I wanna talk about while these are um, cooking here is that you're gonna see my CPU usage is just gonna keep going up and going up. And you know, this is, this is good, but it's also something you have to be mindful of because what can happen is um, you, the rest of your computer can just shut down because you're using all of its resources. Uh, another, another tip that I like to do is I always like to let one of, let one of these uh, uh, command windows start their process, basically start chewing on a frame. Um, and then I like to, uh, then I start another one. And you see what it's doing is it's skipping. It's saying like, okay, you've already got that frame, so I'm going on to the next frame. All right, you've got that. Oh, I see these already done, so I'm going on to the next one. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is quickly, I'm just gonna peek over here one more time. I see that we're pretty maxed out on our CPU usage. So I'm not gonna do any more because sometimes you can have negative results where it's actually taking longer. Um, so you do have to be kind of mindful of that, but the general rule of thumb is half. So um, yeah, do half of the CPUs that you have and you should be happy. All right, I'm gonna pause it and come back and we'll see how long it took. Okay, we have finished and we are coming in at six minutes and eight seconds. So um, if you remember our original render uh, was 17 minutes and three seconds, if I recall. Um, so we've saved ourselves 11 minutes on this and it might not seem like much, but 11 minutes, um, you know, if you have, let's say, uh, you know, a 30 minute, um, 30 minutes worth of content you're rendering, that's that's a lot. Um, so yeah, I ended up getting, um, how many did I get here? One, two, I got a few, one, two, three. Yeah, I stuck with six. Um, but what I did is I actually closed After Effects because a, an instance of After Effects will actually, um, yeah, that, that requires power too. Um, but that does bring me to another point. You know, the another nice thing about the terminal rendering or command rendering is that you can still work in After Effects um, while you're rendering in the background. So it's like background renderer, um, which is essentially what background renderer does, that script or whatever, it's essentially running this. Um, and uh, the one thing you just have to be mindful of is that um, background, uh, when, when you're rendering in the background, you know, that's using the resources of your computer. Um, so uh, you probably don't want to go up to the full um, half, you know, you want to probably do like a quarter of, of what you're capable of for the background rendering. Um, so that's pretty much it. So the last thing I want to show you is uh, I will put this below in the comments um, and you can just, what I like to do honestly is I just have this ready to go. So what I'll do is I'll just come in here and I'll copy this um, and then I will paste it uh, into, um, uh, yeah, into the command prompt and then I will also just drag my file in there. So that way I don't always have to open up AE render and whatnot. So one last thing uh, to note is let's say you need to re-render again and you're like, oh crap, I got to put in that code again stuff. It's terrible, whatever. Um, you actually don't. So if you just come here and you hit the up, uh, this is for Windows or for Mac, just hit up and it's going to bring up your last thing, your last input that you put in. So let's say you even versioned up. You can just come in here and go like underscore V002, like let's assume that's your new project name. Um, then you can just do that. You don't have to worry about, oh crap, I got to put in that code and whatever. Uh, so that's it. Um, yeah, I hope this was helpful and I hope it saves you time and I hope that you can go get beers with your friends and not be sitting in front of a computer. <laughs> All right, I'll see you on the next one.